Hello everyone. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to compare two distributions for their significance. Why do we need to compare two distributions? Because watershed models are inherently uncertain and we must take this uncertainty into account with all of the post calibration applications of the model. When do we need to compare two distributions? When you do analysis of land use or climate change, when you run BMPs like terracing, contour farming, etc., when you change fertilizer regime, tillage practice, irrigation, and so on, and you apply this kind of management operations, and you would like to see if they make any significant difference or not to discharge, to sediment, to nitrate, and so on. So therefore, if the, to see if the changes are significant or not, you need to compare two distributions. So let me explain it in this way. You have uh, uh, time here. This is your observation. Time for us is always the, the observations. And you have made some observations. And then you calibrate your model around each observation point you have a distribution because you made three to 500 simulations. From those simulations, we, um, we calculate the distribution. From the distribution, we get the 95 PPU. That's how you get the 95 PPU. So every observation point is associated with the distribution of, uh, of, of simulations. So now if you run the model for a different uh, uh, management, then you get another distribution at that point, which is the result of your model application for the change that you made, say the land use change. Now, if you would like to compare these distributions to see if the changes that you made are significant or not. And this happens for every observation point. So in some points, maybe it is significant. In some points, maybe it is not significant. And again, remember these points are time. Maybe the changes you made are significant in the fall, in the rainy season, or in the summer. And so this is what you would like to see, uh, how significant, where and when your model uh, change, your management is significant. So to compare, you simply calculate the Z-score. Z-score or Z-test, that's the equation here. This is the mean of the first iteration, your say calibrated model. This is the mean of the change that you made. So that would be the mean of this distribution and the mean of that distribution, and then the standard deviation of these distributions divided by the number of simulations that you have made. So how is it significant? Well, if Z score is greater than three, then it's highly significant. So your distributions are quite apart. If Z score between, is between two and a half and three, then your model is significantly different, but not highly significantly different. And if the Z score is between two and two and a half, then your model is marginally significant. And if it is very close, then it's not significant at all, right? Now, when you run the model, this is what you get. Uh, I will show you how to run the model and where this comes from. But these are the points of time. Here you have time, and this is Z score, and this is my uh, space. That's the discharge at subbasin number three. So at this space and these times, our Z score are like that. Uh, I put everything above three, as I said, is highly significant. So in order to be able to plot it and see the plot, I made everything more than three and a half. I set it equal to four. So all of these fours are all these points, which may be all over the place here. And so we have so many significant. These are highly significant in this region. Between blue and gray, these are significant. And between gray and red, these are marginally significant. And everything below two here is not significant. So if you plot this in more detail, you may see that it is significant in the rainy season 
and not significant in the summer, or it may be significant at some part of the watershed and not in the other parts of the watershed. In this example, you see that uh, uh, 30, 34% of the data is not significant of, of our uh, of, of our predict of our management change that we made, 34% of the times is not significant. And the rest, most of the time it is it is significant. Uh, this is for nitrate, an example for nitrate. Here 68% of the data uh, of the data is not significant. So uh, I would say this would, was not very significant. Whatever measure that was taken here is not significant. And this is another nitrate where 31% uh, is not uh, significant, 69% of the time it is significant. So the changes that you made. Now, let me uh, show you how you would run this. Um, usually what I do is, uh, so you have a, a SWAT cup model here. So you calibrate your model. When I calibrate my model, as I discussed before, I have uh, the first iteration, the first run, not the first iteration, but the first run that I, I make, I call it initial run here. And this is the final run. The final run is my calibrated model. And then you have iterations in between. So what you have to do is you make a folder called Z-score. You bring in the iteration number one, that is your calibrated model. That's your calibrated model. And iteration number two is the changes that you made, the management changes that you made, and then you run your model, right? The same number of runs as you did when you calibrated the model. You run it and you get that you write the uh, signify that as iteration number two. And you bring it in this another folder. And here is the program. You run the program. When you run the program, you get these uh, outputs. This is echo as usual. It just echoes what it reads. It's the, this is Z score for iteration number one. This file is called. And this is Q6. This is variables. This is uh, observations. That means th this is the time every month. Uh, this is the average of that uh, uh, at that point. And that's the standard deviation. Again, that is the average and standard deviation of, of, of this one here. And then this point and this point. So these are all uh, these are all here, all the points. And here I have 16 variables. So I have Q6 all the way to uh, uh, Q8 and all the way to uh, 5. This. I have 11 like uh, discharge and about 15 and about 5. Uh, nitrate stations that I'm comp comparing. And then you get the same thing for iteration number two, that is the, when you made the management change. And then this is the Z score. And the Z score file looks like this. This is the Z score. Again, you have the variable number, you have the time here, and the, the space is here. So, and I also plotted the uh, printed Z1, Z2, two and Z3, these are the, the breakpoints of significance. And I did that so that you can copy this. You can copy this entirely and put it into an Excel file for now. And in this Excel file, you can bring it here and then you can plot this in Excel. So when you plot it, you get the same plots that I, I showed before. So these would be the break, significance break. So all of these are highly significant. These here in the, here is uh, significant. Here is marginally significant and below here is not significant. So you can plot this, you can print this differently. You can put the time here and see if there is a trend here. Maybe every spring you have a trend of, uh, of significance or not. And uh, you can do quite a bit of analysis here. And uh, I did that for uh, for a few of, of these uh, observations. Let me see if I can find them. Uh, uh, here, for example, this is uh, uh, 
at the, at the bottom of each one, you get the significance. So this one would be uh, another ob another ob observation. This would be, which one is that? This is Q number, subbase number 44. And at the bottom of each one, you get the, the percentage that falls into different, different zones. And the uh, nitrate, and some of them are, are each one is, is quite is quite different. So it depends uh, when you are, when you apply a measure. It depends on the space and time whether it's significant or not. So it's a good little tool to uh, deepen your analysis a little bit. Uh, I hope that um, you get to to, to use it. Uh, right now, this is not in the in the programs. Right now, uh, this is the, I just wrote this for SWAT Cup Premium. And in the next version, in the next update, I will have this in SWAT Cup 2019 and SWAT Cup uh, Premium, and also SWAT Cup Plus, uh, SWAT Cup Plus, or SWAT Plus Cup. And then uh, we'll also make a little program that it can give you uh, a nice, uh, nice outputs. Okay, thank you for uh, your interest and uh, bye till the next time.